This is the ASP32P4 function AV port from Espressif. It's kind of a hybrid. It walks the line between traditional microcontroller and lightweight single board computer. It features a powerful 32-bit dual-core VIX-5 CPU that can be clocked up to 400 MHz. That's a move away from the extensive architecture used in previous ESP chips. Speaking of RAM, it includes 768KB of static RAM on chip and also supports external PS RAM up to 64MB. This board however comes with 32MB of PS RAM and 16MB of flash storage. The ESP32P4 does not have Wi-Fi or PLE on chip. So this board comes with this ESP32C6 interface with the ESP32P4 through SDIO, which is nice to have. The ESP32P4 has PPCSI and DSI interfaces. That means native support for high-speed camera input and display output. So yes, now you can interface actual image sensor and good-looking displays. It also has 2D pixel accelerator and H.264 encoder and JPEG codec. This board comes with a nice little demo out of the box called ESP Brucatia which is made with the LVGL. Although I don't like the lack of animation, it's good as a proof of concept. Enough with the specification and demo, real question is how easy it is to work with the ESP32 P4. Currently you can either use ESP IDF version 5.4 or 5.3 to compile your project for ESP32 P4. Fortunately, the HAL APIs to work with the peripheral like SPI, I2C, UART, PWM are identical. Thus, I could compile my existing project for ESP32P4 set as target with very minimal changes. To test how easy it is to run an existing project on ESP32P4, I tried to compile my Micro Canvas 2D graphics engine. In order to make the project compatible with the ESP32P4, I was required to disable components that relied on Wi-Fi and change the kconfig file of SAD driver to add maximum GPIO range to 55 when the ESP32 is selected as in target. After flashing the code, I ran into issue where ESP32 could not set the SPI clock to 80 MHz for some reason. The same initialization just worked fine for ESP32S3, so I created an issue on GitHub and someone pointed out that I need to set clock source to PLL while initializing the SPI bus. After adding that change, everything just worked fine. So yeah, it is pretty easy to port your existing application to ESP32P4. So the ESP32P4 shows up on paper with 768KB of internal SRAM. Sounds solid right, but keep in mind that stuff like bootloader driver free actors itself reserves a huge chunk of this memory and leaves you with 560KB of usable heap memory. Now keep in mind this is not unusual, even ESP32S3 does leave you with around 352KB of RAM out of the 512KB of memory that they advertise. You can optimize it by editing the SDK config and disabling unnecessary features. Now back to ASP32P4 where you also have advanced peripherals like pixel processing accelerator, MPCSI, TSI and H.264 encoder to play with. Internal memory definitely falls short here, and SPRM carries this chip heavily to be usable and do something meaningful with it. By default, SPRM is driven by 20 MHz clock, so you can understand how slow it can be to do any real-time processing. However, if you enable experimental features, you can clock it up to 200 MHz, and hopefully they can make this stable enough to release. I also tested PSRAM to move data over SPI using DMA and unlike ESP32S3, you can allocate block of memory on PSRAM and point that buffer to make SPI transfer without interventions of CPU. In my opinion, that is life saver feature. So this is it. Overall, I'm very excited to build some interesting project with this and push this thing to its limits. Let me know your thoughts down below and thanks for watching.